and welcome to 10 Minutes with Lisa Gregory. I'm Karen Hendricks for Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, and I'm so excited to have one of my fellow writers, Lisa Gregory, here with us today. You've probably seen her byline on dozens of wonderful stories in Celebrate Gettysburg over the years. It's such a treat. I know as writers, we're used to being the ones asking questions and conducting interviews. So thank you for letting me turn the tables on you today. You're in the hot seat this time. <laughs> and I trust you. So to speak. <laughs> thank you. Well, why don't we get started right away? Uh, I feel like we have so much ground to cover. So Lisa, can you tell folks a little bit about yourself and kind of introduce yourself? Sure. I'm originally from Kentucky. Um, I've lived in Maryland for the past 35 years. I um, have been a journalist for almost 45 years. I started working for my hometown newspaper when I was 15. And my mother would drive me to my assignments because I was too young to get my license. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have been freelancing for about 30 years and I've had work appear in the Washington Post, US News and World Report, and it's gone uh, nationally and internationally. I'm married and I have a son and lots of animals. <laughs> oh, well that's a great introduction and so many things I didn't know about you mm. already. So you're <laughs> a, fascinating, um, a fascinating writer. It's great to get to know Thank the personality you. behind the Thank byline you. that we've, we've all come to see and, and love and celebrate Gettysburg. Well, there are two very important thank yous that I want to pass along before we go any further. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to thank 82 Coffee, 82 Cafe, for hosting us today. Oh, but wait, they're not called 82 Coffee anymore. They have a new name. So they are now known as Bantam Coffee Roasters. Oh. Same coffee sh shop, same coffee just a new name so it's very exciting they are rebranding and in fact in the current issue of celebrate gettysburg magazine they have a, a beautiful ad explaining their new name so um congrats to alex and we are so excited to be here today at phantom coffee roasters same location 82 steinwear avenue so you know the address now right Right. And another big thank you, I want to thank our video sponsor today. A Gettysburg Christmas Festival is our sponsor and it is coming up. It's just a magical weekend here in Gettysburg where the town is really transformed. There's music going on, there's entertainment, there are food trucks, including a food truck from right here. Uh, Bantam Coffee Roasters will be there with their food truck. And there is there are so many decorations, of course, course um, it's just a gorgeous time of year there's nothing like it to see Gettysburg decorated and transformed and really brought to life for the Christmas holiday season uh, so it's the second week or, I'm sorry it's the first weekend of December it's December 2nd through the 4th and if you miss it this year just be sure to save that first weekend of December on your calendar next year it's just an amazing time I have to say so, for more information, check out their website, agettysburgchristmasfestival.com. Thank you so much to the great folks there. It's sponsored by Main Street Gettysburg, a great nonprofit downtown organization, and they organize the whole thing. So, good luck to them with this year's festival. Hope to see you there. And speaking of the holiday season and wintry scenes, there is so much happening in the November-December issue of Celebrate Gettysburg. There um, is our Gettysburg gift guide with great downtown businesses and shops that you can check out. And I have to say, in this month's issue, there are so many thought-provoking, fascinating articles. And yours, my dear, is, it's literally sent chills down my spine, really. And so the article I'm talking about is called America's First Opioid Crisis. I had no idea that opioids were used to treat Civil War soldiers and veterans until I read Lisa's article. And so let's start there. I want to know kind of the backstory. Why don't you share that with folks? Sure. How did you discover this story that, in my mind, you know, really had gone untold until now? Well, you know, we're in a current opioid epidemic 
but we've been here before and this is not our first time around with this this awful awful drug um, I belong to a writers group called the Gettysburg Writers Brigade and we put together an anthology from time to time and different writers um, contribute or, or sh short stories and I wanted to do something on the societal trauma that occurred following the Civil War and how did that manifest itself you know with substance abuse and domestic abuse and depression and anxiety and what did that look like and as I was doing research I came across a new book by Jonathan Jones and he is a professor of history at BMI and it's called Opium Slavery and he sort of tackled for the really I think the first time thoroughly um, this opioid epidemic that happened after the Civil War and I thought what a great story to share and sort of let people know and it's been really interesting so many people have come to me and said I had no idea exactly and it's uh, I think there's things we can learn from how it was handled that first time around and things that we may not want to to repeat mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's how it came about it was really eye-opening and Lisa you gave me permission to ask you this question mm -hmm. can you tell folks the story really for you is much more personal it goes much deeper mm -hmm. so can you tell folks about the personal connection you had to telling this story I have been sober myself for eight years. I became addicted to opiates, so I'm sort of a casualty. Well, not a casualty because I came out on the other side, but I, I went through that epidemic myself. And I felt like I was even more passionate or mm -hmm. about, passionate about sharing, you know, that no, this isn't a new thing. It happened to me. Um, everybody knows somebody nowadays. If it isn't directly happening to you or a family member, you know somebody's family member or friend who, who's been um, impacted by this. So it was an honor to write it, but it, it, it was quite moving at times. I was going to say, was it difficult? Was it a challenge for you to write this story? Or in some ways, maybe were you the perfect person to write it? Well, you know, I think a lot of addicts that are in recovery would tell you the same thing. You do feel a need to pass it on and to help others. And I thought, you know, if somebody can read this article and better understand what an addict goes through or the fact that it's not this come lately epidemic, um, then I could have done some, some good there. And um, as... It, it was hard. I mean, at times I would be sitting there and I would get very teary-eyed. Mm -hmm. And there were times I would have to get up and walk away. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, in dealing with the stigma that they experienced then, mm -hmm. that's still happening, is really, really important. There was one story that uh, Jonathan Jones had included. There was a man who was injured in the Civil War, became addicted to morphine, and he, before the war, he owned a farm and he was married and he had children. And then he has this injury, becomes addicted and loses everything, mm -hmm. loses everything. Um, and then when he passes away, his wife goes to get her pension benefits and Congress allows us, even though you're not supposed to, if you have overdosed. Mm -hmm. And then Grover Cleveland, who was president at the time, went behind their back and said no he should have just tucked it out mm. so I think that stigma never goes away I can only imagine the challenges that you have faced and I just want to say how remarkable it is and how proud I am of you <laughs> and um, and I know that I share this sentiment with Jessica Dean our uh, creative director and Celebrate Gettysburg's owner, we were so honored that you were willing and vulnerable 
to share this. So thank you so Glad much. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. What, you know, if you could put your finger, Lisa, on one thing, the most important thing for people to know about opioid addiction, what would, what would that be? That there's hope. I think hope is an incredible thing. And this is such a cliche, but it's so true. Nobody as a little girl, little boy says, when I grow up, I want to be an addict. I want to be an alcoholic. It sort of is something, whether you're, it's based on childhood trauma or depression or anxiety, it can often sneak up on you and all mm -hmm. of a sudden here you are um, addicted. And I just want people to know because, you know, we often hear the saying, um, if they're going to give, give addicts who have overdosed Narcon, why don't they give cancer patients? free chemo. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to think, and I hope I'm an example of that, that we, those of us in recovery are worth it. Mm -hmm. I know that I spend every day being grateful and trying to give back mm -hmm. um, because I'm sitting here and I'm an example of what can be achieved, mm -hmm. but you, you've got to have that hope. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's incredibly important. What a great message, Hope. Mm. Thank you so much, Lisa. And we love to end every video with what we call the final five. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what would you say to, um, I mean, here we are, no pressure, sitting in, in, a, in a coffee shop, but what do you consider the best cup of coffee in Adams County? Of course. But what's the new name? Phantom Coffee. Phantom Coffee. I'm drinking <laughs> a cup now and enjoying it immensely. Excellent. And uh, favorite restaurant in Adams County, what would you say? I have to say a works because, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a member of the Gettysburg Writers Brigade. I am there every Wednesday having a meal before we go upstairs for our meeting. So I've grown quite fond of them. O'Rourke's. Okay, good answer. And here's another one. Who would you consider to be an unsung hero in Adams County? His name is Bob Scapini. Mm. And I've written about him for the magazine. He reconstructs those stone walls that, that we all see throughout the battlefield. He's out in the heat. He's out in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. He has broken his thumb, I think. He's got battle wounds or scars. And he does it, he volunteers. He yeah. does it for free. That was a great story. I remember that one. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question. Can you reveal a hidden gem in Adams County besides Bob's stone walls? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Gettysburg Writers Brigade. <laughs> if you want to be a writer, we meet every Wednesday night. Come and join us. And uh, Or you just want to hear some talented people reading their stories and talking about writing. So... It's been pretty important to me. Okay. And last question. Here we are talking about Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine. So what is your favorite way, Lisa, to celebrate Gettysburg or Adams County? What is in a way? I mean, you visit the battlefield. You walk downtown and you go to a vintage candy store or you go to a metaphysical shop and look at their array of crystals and it's just a celebration sort of waiting to happen. You just have to decide how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing your time, your insights with us today. And thank you to our readers and viewers, wishing you all just a wonderful Christmas holiday season. Again, for Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, I'm Karen Hendricks. She's Lisa Gregory. Look up her story. Take care. Bye-bye.